the studio today, we have uh, Raviv from Wallabot, or Viar is the name of the company. Yeah. The company, yeah. awesome. Wallabot is directed at people who may be makers, but maybe if they want to take it further, then they can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's like a platform. Um, usually, when you do radio frequencies, uh -huh. you really need to know what you're doing uh, to the you know uh, lowest levels. And, and there's no real platform for people who likes radio waves or want to do things with radio waves. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what Wallabot is all about. So we kind of uh, wrapped it up in a way that uh, programmers can use it mm -hmm. uh, in an easy way and just go off and do whatever they want. The RF Duino and things, and those use radio for communication. Mm -hmm. But you're using it for sensing in this seemingly totally new way. Right. Can you tell us a bit about that technology? Yeah. So uh, basically what we do is uh, what you call the, an image radar uh -huh. uh, usually you do radar so you send signals you know get them back but the moment you start having uh, a lot of antennas and a lot of uh, transceivers then other things can can be done uh, mm. and it kind of become an imaging sensor That's once you have good. that then you can start looking into materials you know doing some cooler things and this mm. is more than just radar you go like 10 centimeters into a surface is that right right so the the what about diy the imaging mm -hmm. uh we limit it to 10 centimeters so people but it's want more powerful uh, potentially uh, yeah yeah it's cool. uh, it allows you to really see inside the wall um in terms of monitoring uh, mm -hmm. that can go further away but um, the cool thing about it is that you don't really see a picture huh. so you know, if you look at privacy today, mm. I'm not talking about Facebook privacy, I'm talking about the <laughs> optics. Uh, one of the things that we do in VR and can be done with Wallabot also, uh, is everything that relates to elderly care. So when you think about it, old people, mm. usually they fall in the bathroom, in the bedroom. Right. Uh, you're not going to put a camera over there. Right. So you do want something that can, you know, know their position and if, if they fell down to alert you. Mm -hmm. But even if someone hacks in, you won't see a picture. That's awesome. You will see a blob. Yeah, and mm -hmm. um, a lot of wearable help alerts are being developed to combat that, but at the yeah. same time, someone has to be in this state where they can find the button and push it. Exactly, and exactly. Back. And, you know, sometimes they forget it, they need to charge it. Yeah. The whole idea there is you don't put anything on yourself, and you don't uh, think about it, but people don't want to feel old, right? Mm -hmm. So the moment you start putting things on yourself, and it's kind of like a sign that says, you know, yeah. I got to an age that I need some help, yeah. people don't like that. Plus, everyone uh, gets annoyed with wearing too many wearables. I've been to right. some talks where they're like removing beyond gadgets. You know, like, <laughs> Nobody has a watch anymore, right? <laughs> <laughs> cool. So the company as a whole is not just Wallabot. It's... Right. Right. So the company we started with breast cancer imaging. This mm. is something that we still do today. Mm -hmm. um, we're actually doing in vivo experiments. Um, the target, the idea was to create a, a, a device that will cost much less than mammographies. Mammographies cost like between $300,000 to $400,000. This device mm -hmm. will cost something like $3,000. Mm -hmm. um, and wow. uh, basically when you think about what we're trying to do is to bring the device to the woman instead of bringing the woman to the device. So yeah. about 40% of the women today in the US don't do their bianal mammographies because mm -hmm. you know it's too complicated to go etc etc but if you bring it to the um, uh, physician office etc then mm -hmm. it's okay you go in two seconds you're out so that was the idea yeah. the moment we started with that we understood that the same sensor can be used for many other things mm. and then we started to play with all these ideas just like every other maker yeah. we all kind of like electronics <laughs> and rf and all <laughs> that stuff. yeah exactly yeah. This, that, this was exactly the <laughs> the thing um, so we started to do all these applications, which we do today, mm -hmm. you know, in the automotive industry, robotic vision, mm -hmm. elderly care, uh, agriculture, dairy farms, a lot of applications. And at the seventh point, we said, okay, we're like 50 people. Mm -hmm. It's too cool of a technology to kind of to give it ourselves. So we said, why won't we do Wallabot? Mm -hmm. And this is how this whole Wallabot idea started. So it kind of was a, was a kind of an experiment, you know, uh -huh. let's just do it. Let people play with it and see what happens. It's really great. A lot thanks to you guys. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really successful contest for us too. Yeah. Um, and what I was stunned by when I was looking through it is that, as you mentioned, you know, there's all these different industries it could apply to. I was reading through the list of capabilities it has, and it's just dizzying. Like things mm -hmm. from, you know, looking inside walls, obviously, but also like blob detection within a range. And then also uh, things like measuring breathing. Right. That's 
yeah. and like telling mm -hmm. a heart rate from a distance. Right. That's mm -hmm. fascinating. Yeah. Do you know if anyone's using that? Uh, we the actually breathing. we're actually working. The breathing is uh, mainly for um, like uh, home, mm -hmm. like well being. Uh, if you kind of think about it, you know, it depends on the person. But between twenty percent to fifty percent of our life, we're sleeping. Right? Mm. So. Um, some sleep, some sleep more than the rest. <laughs> um, and you don't really know what's going on when you sleep. Mm -hmm. And it really affects your day. So the Wallabot can track you and tell you how, what was your breathing rate. Again, uh, from far away. And also if you have, you know, your spouse next to you, mm -hmm. okay, it can separate between, between the two. Okay, so can this it, technology can do that. Can it sense both of your Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. you so can cool. actually differentiate to say, okay, mm -hmm. this one is breathing faster, uh, the other is slower, there's a problem, etc. Just like uh, with alerts, it's so much better to have like an ambient system. Right, and, and then um, it's more than that, actually we can see movement. So mm -hmm. it's not only how, you know, how your, your breathing was, but also how many times you moved at night. Okay, yeah. you know, and that's also very important. So maybe this your breathing is, is fine, but you just keep turning in bed mm. and it's not great when you wake up in the morning. So this was kind of the idea. Another application for the heartbeat is something that we do with the automotive. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that people are looking uh, for is uh, tracking your heartbeat. You yeah. know, are you getting stressed? You know, things like that. And maybe you do something uh, about it. So if there was an accident, you know, what's going on, etc. So these two applications are... Uh, Oh, very cool. Wow. Yeah. So how did you get uh, started with this? I heard that you were at Intel for a while. Um, was yeah. your education centered around this kind of... Yeah, so um, before this, uh, I was actually the vice president and general manager of the mobile wireless group of Intel. Wow, yeah. So, um, you know, this was a pretty big business. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Six hundred million dollars a year. Um, but I came to Intel from a startup acquisition. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was a startup guy uh, in the beginning. I was in Intel six years. Before that, I was uh, in the Israeli Defense Forces. We were doing, you know, radars and uh, other stuff for flying objects. Mm. Uh, and I guess this is kind of where it all started. So when I decided to leave Intel, I didn't want to do con communications anymore. Mm. And I was like, hey, you know, Trying to find That's cancer cool. is cool, so let's uh, let's combine all these technologies uh, cool. together. And then I got my two partners joining me, uh, Miri and Aftali, and uh, we started the company. So I love this idea of repurposing the technology from like just like communications and far away detection to like really immediate stuff right it's like right helping people on an individual level yeah concept. yeah that's true and you know it's uh, it takes some time sometimes for for, te for technology to mature to the level where you can actually bring it to consumer world and mm. uh, that's where really cool things happen happen mm. if you look at the lidar and other things like that you know a lot of military kind of uh, grade kind of technology mm -hmm. suddenly become very cheap and then Cool things can happen. So. Yeah, <laughs> so much comes out of like military and space tech yeah, as well. Yeah, exactly. Like, there's so exactly. much that's come from NASA. <laughs> right, right, exactly. And uh, it's nice to see how it's balanced, right? Uh, yeah. So wallabot has been really successful. You sold out in the U.S. and yeah. then you branched out into Europe. Right. And now you've started introducing new features, even since the contest, like right. uh, this new mapping feature. Where right. Like a whole wall. What's next? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> this is insane. Yeah. So basically, we try to push more and more features uh -huh. whatever we um we do because we do things for different industries mm -hmm. um, and whatever we do for industries then people can use it for their own stuff so sometimes you think you're doing something for one thing and then someone comes with a great idea and, mm -hmm. and doing another thing so if you look at the contest i mean people did some really cool things there was a a guy that did the uh, Walla Breathe. I don't know if you noticed that. That yeah. That, that's for me, cool. you know, that was like amazing how a person, you know, kind of Morse code your breathing and and come with this brilliant idea that nobody thought about. Yeah. Make some very complex systems very very simple. Mm -hmm. So think about you know, a person can buy now a Walla Boat for two hundred dollars and you have a a sensing you know for his breathing and he can suddenly talk and that's you know a yeah. paraplegic you know uh, person. So you know really. Good ideas like that, and that's exactly what I like about this wallabot. Cool. So people can really, you know, do whatever they think with the technology. Mm. Do you work with makerspaces at all? Yeah. So um, actually, we're talking with Adam a lot. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he seems how... really excited about it. Yeah, well, <laughs> we really like him. I mean, he's a uh, he's a cool guy. Um, uh, he came to our uh, our uh, office. Oh yeah. And, uh, yeah, and basically every room in our office is like a. Like 
like a lab, okay, mm-hmm. like a mad scientist lab. So we do so many things there. Um, and that sounds really fun. Yeah, it's really fun. I mean, it's like heaven for engineers. <laughs> um, you know, hardware, software, everything, materials, mechanics. Um, so, yeah, so we talked to him about that and how we expand to work mm-hmm. with your ambassador program and all of that stuff, which is a great idea. Um, and, yeah, and we're going to start <laughs> doing that also. And probably then we're going to start doing some hackathons and things like that. Yeah, so that's, cool. uh, that's kind of what's coming. Sweet. Well, Thank thanks you. for taking a minute and uh, jumping you. on film with me. <laughs> I can't wait to share with you what's next from mm. Hackster and Wallabot.